When a director is elected by shareholders to serve as a director, they are members of the board for a certain period of time. Typically, it's a one-year term, but it might be three years if the board is classified. But can the director resign before their term expires? Today on Zippy Point. I'm Brock Romanek, and I'm a big fan of you. As a securities lawyer, my dealings with the director resignation question typically involves the filings that you have to make with the SEC if a director resigns before their term expires. That's a Form 8K, typically filed under Item 502B, unless there's a disagreement between the company and that director, in which case it's a Item 502A filing. But I have a separate vid guide about 8Ks filed under these items, a link to which is below. But I haven't given much thought about the power dynamics, the psychology involved. But this article from Priya Chirian Huskins of Woodruff Sawyer, that's a do you know insurance carrier, and Priya serves as director in her own right, brings up some interesting questions as she analyzes five different director resignation scenarios. Let me quickly go through them. The first scenario is a director leaving for personal reasons. They or a loved one might be ill, maybe they're relocating out of the country, or it could be for a professional reasons. They've retired from their day job and they're looking really to bow out entirely of anything professional. Or maybe they took a new job that somehow conflicts with your company, or maybe the new job is in politics, partisan somehow, and it just doesn't look good. Optics matter these days, particularly politically. This kind of stuff gets captured by the typical provision in a company's corporate governance guidelines that requires directors to tell the general counsel or the corporate secretary that they've had a change in their day job, they've changed their employer, or maybe their responsibilities have changed, their, their primary responsibilities have changed. That gives the company the opportunity to consider whether the director should remain on the board. So you need to get the resignation in writing. There's case law to consider. And since there's an SEC filing at stake, you really want to be real sure it's a resignation and just talk, just musings about whether I should resign or not. This court fin staff interpretation makes clear that the determination as to whether a director communication is a notice of a decision to retire or merely just, like I said, discussions, talk, it's a facts and circumstances determination. You want something concrete. So most boards have policies or written protocol that requires all director resignations to be in writing. The Corp Fin staff interpretation that I just mentioned even encourages it as part of a company's disclosure controls. So the resignation should give a date that notes when the resignation is effective, whether the resignation was part of a disagreement between the company and the director, and all this gets noted in the board minutes. So like I noted earlier, if there was a disagreement between the company and the director, the Form 8K then actually is filed under Item 502A, not Item 502B, and the letter noting the disagreement from the director must be filed as an exhibit to the Form 8K that's filed with the SEC. Priya's second scenario is that the director doesn't like the company's strategic direction. The director is tired of arguing with the other members of the board. Hopefully the director has been speaking up to make their positions known and just wants out, is just tired of it. And they can't wait until the next annual shareholders meeting to get out, so they resign now. Again, if there was a disagreement between the company and the director, the type of 8K you file would change. It's under item 502A now. But do know that a director might resign because they don't like the company's direction without it being considered a disagreement in terms of the SEC's filings, in terms of the parlance that triggers a filing under 502A rather than under 502B. Whether there is a disagreement mostly depends on the director. The director is the one who characterizes it that way in their letter because they're the one writing the resignation letter. In terms of item 502 of Form AK, the disagreement has to be known to an executive officer. And of course, a letter in writing would make it known to the executive officer and have to do with any matter relating to the company's operations, policies, or practices. And that's pretty broad. So again, it, it's the director that characterizes it as a disagreement in their letter, and that would trigger the 502A filing. Priya's third scenario is that the company is failing, and that means there may no longer be any do you know insurance coverage, and that's a big deal, and the type of circumstance where a lot of companies want off. They want to get off the board because they're not covered. But some directors stay and tough it out because that's what they've signed up for, and they feel some responsibility of. The fourth scenario involves a corporate scandal. Again, a director's reputation matters to them, and it's up for them to decide 
whether they want to tough it out, see through what they've signed up for, or parachute out before the going gets real hard. Priya notes that do you know insurance and indemnification typically will continue to cover these departing directors in most cases for the circumstances that existed while they sat on the board. So Priya's last scenario is the toughest. A director tries to right a wrong that hasn't been made public yet. Something's going on inside the company that they've heard about. And then even though they've complained, the malfeasance continues. So, and then Priya cites two court cases in which a departing director might have caused more harm than if they had stayed. So that was considered a breach of fiduciary duty by the director, particularly if there was a noisy withdrawal. They actually did disagree on their way out, and that was deemed to harm the company itself. It's a good question to consider. It makes it real tricky for directors who try to do the right thing but find themselves in even hotter water than they might have otherwise been. They're really in that lose-lose situation. So Priya ends her piece by noting, so can board members resign when they want to? The answer is yes, except when they can't. Anyways, let me know what you think. Mm -hmm.